Live from San Jose, California, it's theCUBE. Covering, innovating to fuel the next decade of big data. Brought to you by Western Digital. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Western Digital headquarters in San Jose, the Almaden campus, a really historic place in the history of Silicon Valley and computing. It's the innovating to fuel the next generation of big data event with Western Digital. We're really excited to be joined by our next guest, Mike Cardano. He is the President and Chief Operating Officer of Western Digital. Mike, great to see you. Great to see you as well. Happy, happy you guys could be here. Absolutely. Exciting day. And, um, and first off, I think kind of the whole merger thing is about done, right? That's, that's, uh, well, it's, yeah, that's gotta it, feel good. It's done, but there, there's legs to it, right? So we, we've combined these companies now, three of them, three large ones. So obviously Western Digital and Hitachi Global Storage. Now we've added SanDisk into one Western Digital. Um, so we're all together, obviously more to do as you expect in a large scale integration. There'll be a year or two of bringing all those business processes and systems together. But I got to say the teams are coming together great showing up in our, our financial performance and our product execution, so uh, things are really coming together. Yeah, and not an easy task by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> no, well, not easy, but certainly a compliment to our team. I mean, right? we, we've got great people, and like anything, if you can sort of harness the, the capabilities of your team, there's a lot you can accomplish, and it really is a compliment to the team. Excellent, well congratulations on that. And Thank talking you. about this event here yeah. today, um, you even use big data in the title of the event. So yeah. you guys are obviously in a really unique place, Western right. Digital. You make systems and big systems, you also make the media that feeds a lot of other people's right. systems. But as the big data grows, the demand for data grows, it's got to live somewhere. So you're sitting <laughs> you know, right at the, uh, at the edge where this stuff's got to sit. Yeah, that's right, and I, that's central to our strategy, right? So if you think about it, there's sort of three three fundamental technologies that we think are just inherent in all of the evolution of, of compute and IT architecture. Obviously there is compute, right? there is storage or memory, and then there's sort of movement or interconnect. Right. Uh, we obviously live in, in the storage and memory node and, and we have a you know, very broad set of capabilities, uh, both all the way from rotating magnetic media, which was our heritage, now including non-volatile memory and flash, and that's just foundational to, to sort of kind of everything that is going to come, right? And as you said, not, we're not going to stop there. It's not just a devices or component company. We're going to continue to innovate above that into platforms and systems. And why that becomes important to us is there's a lot of technology innovation we can do that enhances the offering that we can bring to market uh, when we control the entire technology stack. Right. Now, we've had some other guests on and people could get more information in kind of the, the nitty gritty details of the announcement today, right. the MAMR announcement. Basically, in a nutshell, enabling you to get a lot more capacity Correct. in hard drives. But but I thought in your your opening remarks this morning there were some more high level things right. I wanted to dig into okay. with you. And specifically, you made an analogy of the data economy and compared it to the petroleum economy. Right. I've never you know a lot of talk about, about talk about big data, but no one really talks about it or I, that I've heard in those terms because when you think about the petroleum economy, it's so much more than fuel right. than, and cars and, and the second order impacts and the third order impacts right. on society are tremendous and you're basically saying we're going to do this all over again but now it's based on data. Yeah, that, that's right and I think it, it, it puts it into a form that people can understand, right? I think it's well proven what happened around petroleum. So the discovery of petroleum, and then the derivative industries, whether it be automobiles, whether it be plastics, you pick it, the entire economy revolved around, and to some degree still revolves around petroleum. The same thing will occur around data. You're seeing it with investments. Uh, you hear now things like uh, machine learning or uh, artificial, artificial intelligence. That is all ways to transform and mine data to create value, right? right? And we're going to see industries change you know, rapidly. Autonomous cars, that's going to be enabled by data and, and capabilities here. So sort of pick your domain. There's going to be innovation across a lot of fronts, across a lot of traditional vertical industries uh, that is all going to be about data and driven by data. And what's interesting what Janet, uh, Dr. Janet George talked about too a little bit is the types of data and the analysis of the data is also evolving very quickly Correct. from you know, data at rest, the data in motion, right. to real-time analytics, to like you said, the machine learning and the AI, which is based on modeling of right. prior data, but then ingesting new data and adjusting those models. So even the types and the rate and the speed of the data is under a dramatic change right now. Yeah, that's right, and I think one of the things that we are helping enable is you, you kind of get to this sort of concept of 
what do you need to do to do what you described? There has to be an infrastructure layer that actually enables it. So when you think about the scale of data we're dealing with, uh, that's one thing that, that we're innovating around. Then the issue is how do you allow multiple applications to simultaneously access and update and transform that? Those are all problems that need to be solved in the infrastructure to enable things like AI. Right, and so where we come into play is creating that infrastructure layer that actually makes that possible. The other thing I talked about uh, briefly in the Q&A was, well think about the problem of the future where the data set is just too large to actually move it in, in a sub substantive way to the compute. We actually have to invert that model over time architecturally and bring the compute to the data, right? Because right? Right. it becomes too complicated and too expensive to continue to move from sort of the storage layer up to compute and back, right? right. That, that is a complex operation. That's why those sort of three pillars of technology are so important. And, you, and you've talked, and in, in, we're seeing it in cloud, right? Because it's, it's this con continuing kind of automization, uh, atomic, not, not automatic, but making these more atomic, right? Smaller units, yep. that cloud is really popularized, so you need a lot, you need a little. Right. Really by having smaller bits and bytes, it, it makes that much more easy. But another concept you delved into a little bit is fast data right. versus big data. Yep. And clearly, you know, Flash is the, has been the bright, shiny object right. for the last couple of years, and yep. you guys play in that market as well. But it is two very different ways to think of the data, right. and I thought the other statistic that was shared is that you know, the amount of data coming off machines and people dwarfs right. the business data, which has been the driver of right. IT spend for the last you know, several decades. Yep. Yeah, no, that's right, and, and sort of that sort of, you know, you think about that, and the best analogy is sort of the broader definition of IoT. Right, where you've got all of these sensors, whether it be a camera sensor, because that's just a sensor, right. Right, creating an image or a video, uh, or if it's more industrialized, so you've got all these sources of data, and they're going to proliferate at an exponential rate, and our ability to aggregate that uh, in some sort of an organized way, and then act upon it. Again, let's use the autonomous car as the example. So you have all these sensors that are in constant motion you've got to be able to aggregate the data and then and make decisions on it at the edge, right? So right. that's not something, you can't deal with a latency up to the cloud and back if it's an automobile and it needs to make an instantaneous decision. Right. So you got to create that capability locally. Uh, and so when you think about the evolution of all this, it's, it's really the integration of the cloud, which as Janet talked about, is the ability to tap into all this historical or legacy data right. to help inform a decision, but then there's things happening out at the edge that are real time and you have to have the capability to ingest the content, make a decision on it very quickly, and then act on it. Right, there's a great example, we went to the autonomous vehicle, just navigation for autonomous vehicles, right. its own subset, I think Goldman Sachs said it's a seven billion dollar right. industry in the not too distant future. And the great example is, is the, this combination of the big data and the live data, right. is when they actually are working on the road. Right. So you've got maps that tell you and are updated, kind of what the road looks like, but on Tuesday, they were shifting the lane, and that particular lane now has cones in it, so right. this, this combination of the two is such a powerful thing. That's right. But I want to dive into another topic you talked about, which is really architecting for the future. Unlike oil, data doesn't get consumed and is no longer available, right? It's a reusable asset, and you right. talked about, you know, classic stove topping of data within an application-centric world, where now you want that data available for multiple applications, right. so a very different architecture to be able to use it right. across many fronts, some of which you don't even know yet. That's right. Well, I think that's a key point. So one, one of the things when we talk to you know, CEOs, or CIOs I should say, what, they re, what they're realizing, to the extent you can enable a cost effective mechanism for me to store and keep everything, I don't know how I'll drive value from it sometime right, in the future. Right. Because as, as applications evolve, we're finding new insights into you know, what can help you know, drive decisions or innovation, or, or you know, take it to healthcare, some sort of innovation that cures disease. So that's one of the things that everybody wants to do. I want to be able to aggregate everything. Right. If I can do that cost effectively enough, I'll find a way to get value out of it over time. Right. And that's something where, you know, when we think about big data and what we talked about today, that's central to that, that idea and enabling it. Right, and digital transformation, right? That, all the hot buzzwords, but we, we hear time and time and again, such a big piece of that is giving you know, democratization, democratization of the data, so right. more people have access to it, yep. democratization of the tools to manipulate that data, right. not just the mahogany row, super smart people, right. and, then, and then to have a culture that lets people actually try, experiment, fail fast, and, right. and there's a lot of innovation that be unlocked right within your four walls that that's probably right. are not being tapped into. Well, that's right, and that's something, that innovation and that innovation culture is something that uh, 
we're working hard at, right? So if you think about Western Digital, you might think of us as you know, legacy Western Digital is sort of a you know, fast following, very operational centric company. We're, we're still good at those things, right. but over the last five years, we've really pushed this notion of innovation uh, and really sort of pressing into becoming more influential in those future architectures. That drives a culture that, that, that you know, if we think about the technical community, if we create the right sort of mix of opportunity, uh, appetite for some risk, that allows the best creativity to come out of our right. technical uh, technical community to innovate along these lines. Right, I'll right, give you the last word. Sure. I can't believe we're going to turn the calendar here on 2017, which is, is a little scary. As you look forward to 2018, what are some of your top priorities? What, what are you going to be working on as we come into the new calendar yeah, year? Yeah, so as we look into tw 2018 and beyond, we really want to drive this continued architectural shift. Um, you'll see us be very active, and, and I think you talked about it, you'll see us get increasingly active active in sort of this democratization. So we're going to have to figure out how we engage the broader open source development world, whether it be hardware or software. We, ag we agree with that, that mantra. We will support that. Obviously we can do unique development, but with some, some hooks and keys that, uh, right. that we can drive a broader ecosystem movement. So that's something that's sort of central to us. Uh, and one last word would be, you know, one of the things that Martin Fink has talked about, which is really part of our plans as we go into the new, new year, is really this inverting the model, right? Where we want to continue to drive an architecture that brings compute to the storage and enables uh, some things that just can't be done today. All right, well Mike Cardano, thanks for uh, taking a few minutes and congratulations on a terrific event. Yeah, thank you, appreciate All right. it. He's Mike Cardano, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We're at Western Digital, the headquarters in San Jose, Almaday campus. This is Storage, check it out. Thanks for watching.